Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. I just left my garage because I'm frustrated. I was working on my AT4, looking to make a video for you. And there's just too many what ifs and variables presenting themselves that I need to take a break. So I'm gonna go grab a coffee. You're free to join me. But once I get that coffee, calm down a little bit. We'll come back to the garage and we'll get into it. Let's go. All right, break's over. Feeling much better now that I had that coffee. Today we were supposed to install this tank, but as I was planning the install, I started to encounter some variables that you may want to comment on. But I think for those of you that haven't watched the videos leading up to this one, if you're new to the channel, I need to bring you up to speed. So if you are new to the channel, you probably don't know that when I first got this truck, shortly after we installed an airlift, load lifter 5000 Ultimate adjustable air springs to the back of the vehicle, just for load leveling purposes, because I tow a very long trailer, it's about 33 feet long, fully loaded, it's about 8,000 pounds. And here we are in the prairies where there's a lot of crosswinds and this just helps cut down on the body roll and just make the towing a little bit safer. Also back then we were towing the trailer, you know, hundreds of kilometers or hundreds of miles to get to our destination and then back. But now we have a permanent lake lot where we keep our trailer. So the likelihood of me towing that trailer is very low. I might have to move it to another spot down the road if we find something nicer, but I don't think I'm gonna have to do the long haul, at least with this truck, when it comes to that heavy trailer. But to make all of that more convenient, we had also installed just inside here in the fender cavity, we installed a wireless one compressor also by Airlift. It has a remote control that we can use, or we can use an app on our phone. And from the cab, we can adjust the pressure of the bags to where we want them without ever having to get out. So very handy, very convenient. But like I said, it's highly unlikely that I need to use the benefit of these bags going forward because the heaviest thing I tow other than that trailer would be our boat, which is around 5,000 pounds with the trailer. And then if I ever get an ATV and its trailer, it's still gonna tow it with ease and not really benefit from the airbags. So that's the first part of the conundrum that we're in. So I promise we'll talk more about the auxiliary air tank in a little bit here, but let me demonstrate how the system currently works. So we got our aux beam panel here, which I can turn the panel off with this remote or turn it back on with this remote, or I can use the ignition to power this up. I have videos on all of that. That's all available on my channel, but we're gonna turn the air compressor on. Sorry the truck is so dirty, but that won't stop me from making a video for you. It's just really mucky outside. So now that the compressor is on, we can use our remote at five pounds right now. I don't know if you can read the display on the phone, but we just aired it up to 11 pounds from five. We can go all the way up to 100 because that compressor is designed to go up to 100 pounds, which is the max inflation ability of the airbags, which is also 100 pounds. So they're a perfect match. I can also let the air out with the remote. So we'll go back to the minimum five pounds. There we go, back to five pounds. And of course, because we had an air system on board, why not add an auxiliary fill, which I have a video for, but that allowed us to start filling up soccer balls or maybe a low tire. Not very efficient because you don't have a reservoir of compressed air, so it takes a while to do the filling. But with the simple switch of this knob right here, we isolate the airbags from the rest of the system and then the compressor fills this up, up to 100 pounds. So that should bring you up to speed, you know, the capabilities of the system as we have it today. And it does its job and I feel it does its job very, very well. I'm very happy with the outcome. However, like I said, I'm probably not gonna haul the big camper anymore. I'm not gonna get the full benefit of these bags. Yes, I could add an air tank, but it's gonna limit some things that I'll explain shortly. But I think I'm going to remove the airbags as a matter of fact, I know I'm gonna remove the airbags. That's gonna leave me with this airlift compressor that's specifically designed for those airbags, but not really for a tank. So let me explain. So this is the air tank that I chose. It's made by Vire. It's a two and a half gallon. It's sleek, it's small. I wanted something with a smaller form factor like this and the price was right. Now, if I was to use the compressor that I have, it's only rated to 100 PSI max. This is for 150. So I wouldn't be able to use this tank at its full capacity. That's problem number one. Problem number two is the CFM or the volume of air that that compressor moves is only 0.79 CFM cubic feet per minute. 
which is quite low. It's fine for airbags, but it's not really good for a tank. So the math tells me that it would take almost three minutes to fill this tank to 100 pounds if the compressor was located right beside it. But the fact that this tank would probably have to go farther away from the compressor just because of its size, it's probably gonna take about four minutes to fill the tank. Now, if you wanna fill a flat tire on a full-size truck, you need more than two and a half gallons at 150 PSI to fill a flat tire on a truck like this. You would need to fill this at least twice, maybe three times to get it back up to proper pressure. So you can see that the compressor that I have is now the weak link to the system. So these are our choices and this is where your comments in the comment section below would really be helpful. But first we can mount this in a few different areas. It actually will fit behind the light bar. There's a cavity in there between the frame rails where I could put a support and then mount this to that support so we could have access to it up at the front of the vehicle. That one's a lot harder to do because just access and getting under there really isn't that fun. Or we can just connect a line where our current attachment is right now. We put a line there instead. We run it down here all along to the box and then we place it in the bed and I have a couple different spots where it would fit. So an easier install than the front would definitely be back here. We could put it up at the front of the bed and these supports actually fit pretty good between the bed rails. We would just have to drill some holes a little bigger than the ones that are here in the bottom of the bed so we could run all of our lines. And then if we ever did take it out, you can get plastic grommets or rubber grommets that would cover those up or plugs, I should say. But I'm kind of favoring putting it over here because if you look closely at the sides, you have these caps that just pop out and I could easily run feed lines and auxiliary lines. We could do everything right here. It's tucked out of the way. And I really don't think it would be as cumbersome in this location as it would be there. So this is kind of my preferred spot and what I'm leaning towards, but I'm interested and I'd like to hear your comments in the comment section. So assuming we get this mounted somewhere, we just need to decide, do we mount it and use the existing compressor, fill this to hundred pounds, get a little bit of benefit out of it and really long fill times for flat tires and things like that. At hundred pounds though, when you might be wondering this, at hundred pounds, it will not run a train horn properly. So that's not really an add on we can add with this system. So the alternative is, wait to put this in, I'll order a better compressor, we'll take out the bags, we'll take out that compressor, we'll find them a new home, because I'm not really gonna use them anymore, and then we'll put in this system, and I'll walk you through all of that with a new video and how we're gonna wire it up to my switches and all that kind of stuff. And then we could even look at adding a train horn, but if we don't do that, we could still run some small air tools off of it, fill tires faster, refill this tank a lot faster, so I think that there's some value in doing that. Let me know what you think anyway. But these are the things that sometimes stop me from doing an install is all the different considerations because I got to think what's the future state going to be and is the install that I'm doing going to really benefit me in the long term. And I don't think that adding this right now will. Maybe you'll think differently and that's where the comments come in. But it is what it is. But if you liked today's video and you found it a little bit informative or at least was able to catch you up on things, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.